How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Hey, everybody. Happy Sunday. Happy AEW Revolution Sunday. Sting's last match in a few short hours here. The show's about to start in, I don't know, an hour or so here. Really stacked card. We're going to break this down. A lot of the show is going to be this today. Sting's final match, obviously. AW Collision last night hinted at a possible opponent for Mercedes Monet's first feud in AW. We didn't see Collision. Who do you think it is? Write in the chat. Curious. You know what? I like this. I'm into this. Also, The Rock on SmackDown on Friday night. That was something. As we're doing this, I have it on just so I can remember because Friday was so long ago and I don't remember anything. That segment from beginning to end was what, like 40 minutes, 38 minutes, whatever it was. I was there for and a lot of criticism over this on, on why the for almost, you know, uh, the first 40 minutes were dedicated to talking. I was at a SmackDown where the bloodline came out. They did about 40 minutes and the entire arena ate it up. Nobody criticized the thing. So we'll talk about that. Also, a lot of passings in the world of professional wrestling. Virgil passed away. Ole Anderson. Very different generation of athlete. Very different generation of professional wrestler. We'll take some time and talk about this. Especially Ole. And how instrumental this man was to the world of professional wrestling. All this and a whole lot more here on an AEW Revolution episode of Wrestling Observer Live. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline Sunday Edition. We got a pay-per-view coming up very shortly that could be considered one of the most important pay-per-views for this company. With Sting's retirement, the last show before Mercedes arrives, the last pay-per-view before Mercedes arrives, the last pay-per-view before Okada, potentially, and a whole lot of other things in this company. It is a transitionary year for AEW, and I want to take some time to talk about that. But I do want to talk about SmackDown. Also, I got a guest in the studio. Me. My daughter's here. Taylor's here hanging out for a couple minutes. So you're watching a pay-per-view tonight? Yes. Are you excited to watch a pay-per-view tonight? I know we're watching The Rock right now as we're doing the show. It's happening here. Uh, Taylor's going to be hanging out with me for a few minutes while we do this. That's a good shot. Let's get a wide shot of that. Let me see. So where's the wide shot? No? There it is. Look at that. It looks great. All right. Now we'll talk about professional wrestling. Bloodline segment. My kids went nuts for this. <laughs> Taylor's here for this segment because she uh, she very much enjoyed watching SmackDown. It's interesting, right? The perspective of wrestling and how it changes as you get older and what you're into. You know, a lot of criticism. 42 minutes for this Bloodline segment. And I have to tell you, the amount of disenfranchised or casual or, you know, Twitter followers that only just watch the wrestling news, they don't really keep up with it. They were psyched for this. The amount of feedback that I got, listen, it speaks volumes, right? There's different levels of commitment and watching. There are people that watch the Mets only in the playoffs. There are people that only watch the Mets when they go to a couple games throughout the year. And there are a, a lot of people that watch the Mets every single game throughout the entire year. And they're committed to this because they're franchise. Same thing goes for professional wrestling. 42 minutes. The Ro Roman Reigns comes out, does his bloodline entrance. He comes out and starts speaking. He tried to get Glendale there in Arizona uh, to acknowledge him. After the third time, he tried to leave. But Paul Heyman told him that they had to wait for The Rock. You could see how annoyed Roman was by this. Dwayne comes out. Just insults the fans. Calls the people of Phoenix something I'm not too sure I could, I could say on the radio. There was also a sign that they were trying to censor where it said, die, Rocky, die. Did you see this, Matt? I did. I, I was perplexed with everybody else. I thought it was me. I thought it was my TV. I was like, what's going on? Why is it blacking out? 
my daughter and goes, then, my daughter yeah. goes, what, what's, I think the TV's broken during the segment. And she's like, oh my yeah. gosh, why does that sign want him to die? Not to explain. I'm like, oh, it was like a thing. They chanted to him. But you know what's amazing? They obviously, the network didn't want this or WWE didn't want it. Someone didn't want it, right? But that whole die, Rocky, die thing was perpetuated by the WWE. It wasn't, it wasn't really a chant. It wasn't something that really existed. My God, look at Dewey come out with that jet, with that shirt, huh? Do you, see, you saw that shirt? That was something. That was that was a statement. I would I wear mean, that. He's, he's playing that character, and you know he's playing that uh, Hollywood rock character. That outfit is right up my uh, my Miami uh, Andrew Zarian in Miami collection <laughs> that I'll be launching this fall. Uh, the Rock comes out. He insults people. They counter offered Cody's challenge here. Uh, which, it, it, you know, I think I've been pretty vocal. I'm not a fan of this tag match. I got yelled at, right, by by a professional wrestler. And, he's, and he said, um, I don't know why everybody's complaining that they got to work two nights. These guys work two nights, molten, like, regularly. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm complaining about myself. I'm not complaining about them. I know they're totally capable of doing two nights. <laughs> I just don't want to see them come out twice. <laughs> whatever it could be a fantastic match and i'll probably eat my words uh, and i'm and i'm almost convinced of it because of the hype around this it, it's astronomical rock comes out they do a they do this challenge thing where if they win the tag match if cody and seth win the tag match against the rock and roman there's no bloodline interference but if they don't then it's bloodline rules so i take it as they're going to lose somehow. Cody Cody, and Seth are going to lose that first night. And they're going to come up with some wacky stipulation. And somehow Cody will overcome all the odds. And it'll be the rock that, that spoiled this, this, this world title reign that Roman had. Unprecedented. And now you're setting up for, for their program later down the line. Okay. I wanted to see it done this year. But this is the closest we've ever been. Did you like how they did this, you, Matt? Yeah, um, I did, and I I disagree with you a little bit. Okay, tell me. As, I think, I think they might go the way of the Bloodline winning at the the tag match, and then and then so Cody has to has more odds against him, and he still somehow manages to uh, because you need the Rock out there at ringside. If they're gonna do what I think they're gonna do, and that's him, yeah, so ultimately costing him. So can you imagine? I think I think okay. having them all out there and him overcoming everything is a better way to go. That's just I have, me. I don't. Know. I have fan. I have fan fictioned the hell out of this match. And I know. I, know. I, I I've now really let. Mad. I have led down the road of Steve Austin comes and saves <laughs> oh, Cody geez. at the end. <laughs> <laughs> that that is where that is the uh, the outcome that I have come up with here. Have you seen how Jack this man is on his videos, uh, on his Instagrams, and it's all over I TikTok now? He looks I should probably remarkable. Look He's doing the like the cold tank. He's doing the cold plunge stuff. He's really into this. He looks unbelievable. Wow. Listen, so this is where they're headed. Uh, I mean, you know, they 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 once again booked themselves into a weird scenario that they can't pivot out of. I do think it should be Cody's year. I do want Cody to win that title, but I also want to see The Rock and Roman. This is a compromise to keep all of us happy, I guess. Understandable. And, it, you know? and it, if they make all the way to next uh, next Mania, that match will be even bigger. Will so, it? And it won't have to be for but, the but title. Wait, but wait, so. will it be bigger? You know, sometimes a year passing doesn't help. It, it's a real gamble they're taking here. They feel that this is this will be fine. Well, I think they get enough promotion. They'll... It'll it'll heat back up next year. We'll be yeah. by the time we get to WrestleMania 41, it will be big. Tiffany Stratton defeated have... Naomi in eight minutes. She had a great showing at Elimination Chamber last week. Bailey Dakota Tiffany, Kai. She actually, uh, real quick, she actually yeah. hit that uh that moonsault. This is the first time she's hit it on the main roster. Yeah, right. she fin she finally hit it, <laughs> and it looked good. So there's that. Dakota Kai and Bailey uh fought. Asuka and Kyrie Sane in an apparent no contest. It went four, four minutes, 30 seconds. So the story was she, Dakota pulled the Sid move where Bailey's Actually, begging to go for that pin. 
the, uh, the tag. If you remember, this was what Bailey did to Sasha like two, two, three years ago. She did the same exact thing, same movement and everything. Yeah. Someone yeah. on someone on Twitter put it did a side by side. It was almost the same thing. So yeah, mm. perfect timing too, uh, with the impending return of Mercedes to um, AEW her debut. So this is where it's headed. Uh, Dakota jumped off the apron. Bailey attempted to make the tag. All of Damage Control attacked her. Bailey's now on her own going into WrestleMania. Later, Jade Cargill showed up for a quick face to face with EO, which was interesting. Braun Breaker. In a squash with Zion Quinn and Carlito defeated Santos Escobar in a street fight 11 minutes. That mask that Ray wore was very Muda-esque, huh? Yes, yes. And your partner, Rich, yeah. uh, pointed this out on, on the Matt Men podcast. And I didn't really catch it right away. But yeah, he's right. I didn't either until I saw it. He, he caught that. And Austin Theory defeated... Uh, Austin Theory lost to Randy Orton in 9 minutes and 16 seconds. It was a decent SmackDown. I think the big story was the opening segment with The Rock and him acknowledging Roman as his tribal chief and everything else that they did. When we come back from break, we're going into this pay-per-view. AW Revolution. An hour away from the time that this is happening. We'll be right back after this here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, at Andrew Zarian. I'm joined by a very special guest today. My daughter's hanging out with me. Hi. Hi, Taylor. You excited for the pay-per-view? Yeah. Yes. We have made it a tradition in my house where the whole family watches these pay-per-views now. And it's become so much fun for me. Um, do you want to tell everyone how Dominic is your favorite wrestler? Yes, Dominic and Rhea, right? Yeah. It's I have a great story. We did the meet and greet at WWE, which uh blessed that I could do this. And my son is so excited to meet Dominic. And Taylor, what did he finally got up to him and what did he call her? He called Hi Domino. Hi, Domino. <laughs> and Rhea turned around and goes, That's his new name, Daddy Domino. And we all had a great laugh. Let's go into this. AEW. Sting's final match. MG, my producer, he's already crying. The tears are already oh. rolling down his face. Let's go into this. They got, you know, they made some changes to this pay-per-view. It is stacked. I expect this to go long. You're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven matches here with the pre-show. Zero hour. You got the Bang Bang Scissor Gang. Anthony Bowen, Max Caster, Billy Gunn, Jay White, Austin Gunn, Colton Gunn against Jeff Jarrett, Jay Lethal, Willie Mack, Isaiah Cassidy, Mark Quinn, and Satnam Singh. This is a this is a random match that they have put here <laughs> in the zero hour. I, this continues the Jeff Jarrett. Uh, I guess he, he he. This is his crew, right? He has a crew of rejects. I and I say that. And That's I don't what it that is. That way. <laughs> That's what it is. Mm -mm. Just the land of misfits, but Jeff Jarrett. This is this is typical AEW. Get some, get these guys on the show on the on the zero hour, and get them work. And, of course, you know, it, it, it. I don't mind this at all. This reminds me of this is how old, old pay per views used to be done. Yeah, so you I put a nice it. six man or whatever it is to start it off. People get into it, you know, and then they you you start the show. Zero hour also will have crowd settled in. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Chris Statlander and Willow Nightingale against Julia Hart and Sky Blue. Very cool. All-star scramble match. This is for a future shot at the AEW World Championship. This changed here, right? This was the meat match. Wardlow, yes. Powerhouse Hobbs, Lance Archer, Chris Jericho, Hook, Brian Cage, Magnus, but not that Magnus, different Magnus, CMLL Magnus, and Dante Martin. So I guess it was supposed to be Keith Lee... And Miro in this match. It was supposed to be Wardlow, Powerhouse Hobbs, Lance Archer, I guess Brian Cage, Miro, and who did I say? Who else was it? Lance Archer, Miro, um, Brian Cage, Wardlow. Wardlow. I said somebody else. 
Keith Lee. There you go. Thank you. Oh. So my other producer in my <laughs> other ear that doesn't have a uh, have a uh, ear, in ear. Um, I thought it was interesting that they announced that, and then apparently nobody was ready, and it caused some confusion because Keith Lee still hurt, and Miro apparently is hurt. He's been hurt since September. And I guess he only showed up for that final match uh, at World's End for Andrade. Then he left again. I don't know. Who do you think takes this? Who should take it? I mean, it's really down well, to a couple on, people here. Yeah, Based on collision, I feel like it's going to be Wardlow. Um, that's my opinion. I, I, It's either him. I guess it could be Jericho because that, that's who they highlighted on that promo last, or last night. But... Um, it's either power. I think it's going to be either Powers House Hobbs or Wardlow. I think it's something good for someone like Hobbs to have, you know, and you could really yeah. have him, you know, whoever wins that championship. Let's say it's Joe, right? Let, let's by default say Joe retains. That's a cool match to see. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I find this interesting that this is the, uh, the replacement. It, it it has to be somebody that was probably was gonna win that meat match, right? Yeah, yeah. I All think right. it's the same person. So I, yeah, I'm gonna say they're Hobbs or Wardlow. John Moxley and Claudio versus FTR. This is their return match. They had that match on Collision a couple of weeks ago that ended in a time limit draw. And it was a good match, but you could tell that they were obviously holding back a lot of things, and I and I don't expect them to do so here. Another great match. There's a lot of match of the nights here, okay? Major contenders for match of the night, and and I'm not even in it, right? I've already announced that would this match the the Osprey the Osprey the the John Moxley Claudio and FTR match. You know it's going to be solid. The next oh, yeah. match, however, on on this Will Osprey, Takeshita, part of the Don Callis family. They teased that some dissension amongst them. On Dynamite. I said this on Matt Men. And I, I think it got taken totally out of context here. Okay. Did you see that post that everybody started posting? That post where everybody started posting. Sharing. <laughs> about the next generation of AEW talent that's going to be highlighted. Yes. Okay. Everybody, I don't know why people took what I said as the end-all be-all with nobody else involved. I, I was talking about the future of this company and who they're looking to highlight more in the coming year. And there's a lot of names. There's a tremendous amount of names here. I just happen to name a few. That doesn't mean that MJF isn't going to be, you know, in the mix on the top tier or Omega when he returns or Danielson. I was talking about that next generation of young talent that they are probably going to put emphasis on in this company. Did you see that at all? I was getting yes. message bombarded it, yeah. with messages about why them and no one else who to why you're going to tell me that MJF is picked... getting a push. And I, and I never said you... any of that. Yeah, you just picked a couple of names. I think there are guys like Takeshka is going to be one of them. That look at I, I said Will Osprey. I said Will Osprey, yep. Takeshita, Swerve, Hangman, Daniel Garcia, Orange Cassidy, and Okada when he returns. These are going to be obvious top names, and it's a very different top mix than we've seen previously. I'm not saying Daniel Garcia tomorrow, but you could obviously tell that they they are planning something big with him. Swerve, we already know. Osprey, we know. Takeshita, we know. But it's a very different group on that top level that they're trying to find that breakout star here. They already have a couple of them. It's a very different company. That was my point. My point was the top is no longer just going to be the Chris Jericho's, the Kenny Omega's, the Danielson's, or, or and whoever else was interchangeable. Moxley. You, they, they, they are looking to revitalize this. And yeah, of course, those people that I mentioned earlier from the previous generation of AEW talent that was on the top will be in the mix. But you got the hottest talent in the business here between Osprey, Takeshita, Swerve, Hangman, Garcia, Cassidy. 
and obviously Okada, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Yeah, I, th this was not a. I, I I was listing off conversations and names from conversations that I've had. It wasn't a end all be all. But you look at this card. Will Osprey Takeshita. This is this is going to be quite possibly a match of the night here if they want it to be. You also have TNT champion Christian against Daniel Garcia. You know, I don't Real like. Quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real quick, can we go back to the Osprey match for just mm -hmm. a second? Um, that yeah. Will Osprey, I think the, the story here is going to be him breaking away from Don Callis, and I think they'll make him a baby face. That's just yeah, that has to be the story like here. New. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, I got to tell you though, he he comes off very natural as a heel, but I understand why you want to make him a baby face, mm -hmm. especially now. Um, Man, though, it, 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 this company is changing for sure, and I think Tony has seen where it needs to go. Uh, this is these are just really key pieces to that puzzle. Young, healthy talent. You want him a babyface at All In 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 Wembley, I think, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I would say I would say you want him in a very key match at Wembley. I don't know if it's for the title or not. Uh, I I would say that he is a future world champion in there in that company. Unless something tragic oh, yeah. happens where things fall apart. But Osprey is a future world champion. Takeshita, I don't know. It's still, he, he really is one of my favorites. Nobody had, he has a very unique look about him. I, there's something intriguing about him to me. Even though he doesn't say much, there's still, there's still something about him that, that elevates him. This is going to be my match that I want to see tonight. TNT champion Christian Cage defends against Daniel Garcia. This is just to extend the edge feud here. By the way, we, we, have, we have another segment. Adam this. Copeland. We have another. <laughs> yes, Adam Copeland. I'm taking my time with this card, all right? Uh, Adam Copeland. This is just to extend that. So, I mean, listen, Garcia, I, I don't like to see this guy lose as much as he's losing, but I understand why he's here. And he's on the pay-per-view, and I know that they have plans for him, so we'll see where this goes. This is the match that a lot of people want to see. I'm going to talk about it in detail after the break because I'm very invested in this. AEW Continental Crown Champion, Eddie Kingston, defends against Brian Danielson. This is a match that's been built up for a while now. This is the workers' title, I guess. If this is the worker's title, what's the international title? I guess every title is the, the other title. worker's title. The other <laughs> worker's title. <laughs> I mean, every title is the worker's title in this company. Uh, when we come back from break, we're going to break into this. We're going to talk more in detail about these two guys in this match and everything else happening on this card. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Continuing our preview to AEW Revolution. Very soon. I think the pre-show started already. So we'll hurry up here. We were talking about Eddie Kingston and Brian Danielson. And man, you know, you got to... For all those detractors out there for this company. There are... there. I get... I don't know why. I, I get these. And I get these extremely... Like, I want this company to go away. It's such a way... A guy like Eddie Kingston is making a tremendous salary. You don't want to see that. You don't think these guys and, and women deserve a place to go outside of one company that's going to pay them a great salary and put them on national television and allow them to continue what they've been doing for 20 some odd years like an Eddie Kingston. It's insane to me. Eddie defends the title against Brian Danielson. This is going to be a very hard-hitting match. Who takes it? Taylor, Eddie Kingston or Brian Danielson? Who wins the title? Pick one. No right or wrong answer here. Eddie Kingston or Brian Danielson? Eddie Kingston. All right, that's your answer here. I'm putting my money on Eddie. AW International Champion Orange Cassidy defends against Roderick Strong. Another. This could be a sleeper. I want to see Roddy get that title. You know, Orange has done a great job with that international title. It was the All-Atlantic Championship. 
He lost it. He won it. He's had this thing for a while now. I, I would love to see Roderick Strong with it and see what he could do. It, it, it is, you know, the presentation of Roderick Strong, I didn't really care for with the Adam Cole stuff. I still have no idea where this is going. It's all over the place. The devil, who's the devil, and then it went nowhere. I hope this is somewhat of a reset for this guy. And we get Roderick Strong in a very different position where he's back to being the worker. Don't you think they're just kind of in a holding pattern until Adam Cole gets cleared? I feel like this whole Yeah, but thing you know what? I got to tell you, down. I don't you think That's a good question. Uh, do you mm -hmm. think the audience is going to care as much? Yeah. So remember the whole Bang Bang Gang uh Scissor Gang thing yeah. was to combat the this new uh Adam Cole um Align or his faction, so they said we got to get together, and now they're just dirt in a holding pattern too. Yeah. So. Yeah, I I don't I don't love it. I I don't. Yeah, and I've been as you said that I it's uh, I I'm trying to find a clip here that I that I cannot find. Um, I don't know. It, it's not. It's not, I'm not. I'm not loving it. But we'll see where it goes. I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. AW Women's World Champion Tony Storm defends against Deanna Perrazzo. Uh, I'm this, forward to this action. Uh, you know what? I hope they have a great match because Tony's been mm -hmm. wrestling a very different style, and it's not translating as as well as some people hoped. But the character is fantastic, so I'm curious what Deanna and her are going to do. Also, last night on Collision, did you guys catch that little hint from Serena? Did you catch it? I did. I did. I caught it right away. I thought. What did, what did Deeb I say? How many, she said, she said, I'm the boss or I'm the final boss. I'm and, the final and really, boss. Yeah. And I'm the greatest. And she really, she really, she, it's a subtle hint. And I don't know if that's where they're going, but I mean, it would be a great first feud for, to bring Mercedes in. I think, and, I think and her. And that gets her on collision to help maybe boost those ratings. Interesting. I think her, um, I want to see um, who else do you want to see with Mercedes? Oh, I think there's countless, man. Of course, Tony Storm. Uh, I her and Britt Baker is money, and I think you're gonna end up paying off the her and Soraya thing. Her uh, and Soraya yeah. get paid off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, there's gonna be a lot, lot of these. there's a lot of interesting. Yeah, hmm. yeah, very interesting. Uh, Tony Storm, Deanna Perrazzo. I think Tony retains this in some weird, wacky ending. With Mariah Three. May involved, I'm sure, for sure. and and, doc, and, yeah. uh, and Dr. Luther or Mr. Luther or whatever they call him now, the Butler Luther, just Luther. <laughs> that guy's had a hell of a career, huh? Good to be friends with Chris Jericho. Oh. He was a deathmatch guy in FMW. It's great to see. And now was he FMW? Or was he Wing? Uh, FMW. Uh, I think it was FMW. Amazing. Now he's a manager. He's a Butler now. Wrestling changes. He was, you, you could become a Frankenstein monster and then you could turn into uh, a butler. It's great. <laughs> Three way match. AW World Champion. Samoa Joe defends against Swerve Strickland and Hangman Page. They did a great swerve, for lack of a better term, on Dynamite, where Hangman came out with the crutches and he kind of bowed out out of the match. Joe comes out, Swerve is out there, and Hangman attacks Swerve. You know, part of the story to me is going to be uh, that I feel that they're going into, which they have. They've told this story a little bit. It's not about what Hangman wants. Hangman doesn't care about that world title. It's more about preventing Swerve from getting it. And that's really what it's coming off as. Uh, and I like that. That's a good story to tell. You know, I feel like Swerve's time is coming. As, as world champion. You know, I don't think it's to, I don't think it's tonight, but I don't um, think it's tonight. Yeah, not that. And I'm not giving you any inside info or anything like that. I would never ruin a pay-per-view on a pay-per-view night. But I I just feel like, you know, Joe could use this title a little bit longer. Um, It's going to mean more. Whoever listen, takes it and, from him will and mean And you more. got you got more story, a, right? You got yeah. double or nothing mm -hmm. in May. You got that potential April pay-per-view. The rumored date is the end of April. A day of, uh, after a, uh, a national holiday. Mm -hmm. For some, right? That day's a... I think for Rob Van Dam, that's a national holiday. Uh, that's a <laughs> rumored uh, story here, right? That we're seeing. Mm -hmm. 
I think double or nothing would be a great moment. I think uh, all in would be a great moment. I think all out would be a great moment. You know, if you, you, if you want, if Swerve is getting the title, then you could do it big. I don't like a rush story here, but this is interesting. You know, the story with Hangman is going to continue. Uh, Joe, great looking world champion. Let's see where this goes. Who do you think takes this? You think Joe takes it? I think Joe retains, yes. Okay. Especially since it's not going to be the main event. I think it's, you know, It is not. Mm, it, no, because the main mm, event here in a mm, nearly sold out Greensboro Coliseum, as oh, sold out so as you could, you could hope for, 16,000 plus in that building, maybe 17,000 in that building by the time tonight come, rolls, you know, the, the last uh, person enter that, enters that building. You got the AW Tag Team Champions, Sting and Darby Allen for Sting's final match, his retirement match against the Young Bucks. You know, just from beginning to end, I, I, I'm I curious how this happened. Obviously, Sting wanted the Bucks. Uh, Sting is not going to do a single. Some people thought that it maybe could be a world championship for Sting's last match. People wanted it to be uh, a singles match or somebody from his past that was his opponent, but those guys are not there anymore. Those guys don't exist as much especially in this capacity to do a main event match. This is going to be very good. I, I don't think this is going to be a bad match or a bad story. Just I'm very curious on how they end it. Do we get an up, uplifting final moment with Sting holding that tag title and he retires it on, on Dynamite and he leaves and they do a tournament? Do they do a schmaz? Do they bring people out from Sting's past? Again, I don't know who would be available to do that. I know they've talked about Magnum TA and others. Are, there's going to be some people there. Now, I'm sure there will be some people there. In the there's going to be a yeah. big celebration in the ring after, I would have to think. I don't know, but how do you think they should end this? Should Sting and Darby retain, or do you do the tradition and you pass it along to the next guy? I personally, for me, the way I would do it is I would have him retain in some sort of dramatic way. They lay it down. Uh, they relinquish the ch title, and then um, on on Dynamite this week, they can do a qualifier. So whoever wins the FTR, Claudio, and Moxley match yeah. is one opponent, and then they do a qualifier on Wednesday, and then at the big business show the following week, they have the tag title match um, okay. to retain for a new tag title. That's how I would do it. I don't know you if know, that's right, but... I that's mm. fine. I'm okay with it. I, I'm going into this with very little expectation. I, I don't right. like creating this like this is how it should go and then being disappointed. I think it's really important to just let things think let these Which things play out do. sometimes. <laughs> and that's what I'm doing. However, you know, if there was ever a great example on something AEW was able to do where other wrestling promotions have not been able to do, and that's not ruin the freaking legacy of top older talent. WWE, I don't know why they have this inability no, to I think ever do right. Thing, right? I, I, mm. What? I guess Just it's a Vince rib, thing. Yeah, he but, wanted to rib everybody and, and humiliate them in, to a certain extent. And I don't think Tony has any intention of doing anything like that. Do you know, I'm going to give you one name, okay? Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle's final yep. run in that company. Mm -hmm. You took this guy. You told everybody he's one of the greatest talents you've ever had. Even outside of your company, you've respected this. He shows up, and he's losing everywhere, and he's goofy. And I get that he's not as, as mobile, but you know what? You do your best to protect that guy. Hogan was the only one, really, that they protected like that. Mm -hmm. There was but some iffy stuff in there, but yeah, you're right. You know, Hogan, they protected. Flair, they made him do all these ridiculous things that made him senile. They bring back these legends. They're in these backstage segments. They're doing the tutti fruity and they're acting senile. While AEW. They, they downright humiliated uh, Mark Henry on the way out. Remember hum that? Yeah. Mm. The big show, they made him cry every week. Dusty. Dusty. They brought Dusty out. They had him, uh, you know, emasculated by Stephanie McMahon. It, it, it is so bizarre how they do it. But in AEW, you know, every one of these older names that they've brought back, even for just like one-off matches or whatever they're doing, it's been with tremendous respect. Rob Van Dam is a great example of this. He's having a blast doing this. Um, 
They they've brought you know Sting, one of the gla- the best final runs that you could ever imagine. They treated him as a special attraction. He never lost. He did you know bare minimum. They treat him like listen, he's a sixty something year old guy. We understand the value in him. And we're gonna be we're gonna have him look as good as possible, not a weak, frail man. Correct. And at the end of the day, guess what? It's all make believe anyway. Why not have that as the send off? Why not make him into this special attraction and this larger than life person? I I love how they booked this man. And this is coming from someone that grew up on the East Coast, on the Northeast. Sting was not the man for you. You know, I that WCW run, the only reason why I ever got to experience it the way that I did is because I had a grandmother that loved WCW. For a lot of other people, that was their Hulk Hogan. Their, well, that was their ultimate warrior. And for and, me, that was who and, I grew and for up you, with. that's who so, you grew up yeah. with. And I think it's amazing that we are finally getting a proper send-off here. No matter what they do tonight, this will be a very memorable night, and it shows you how important Sting was to professional wrestling. Because in in a cold period for AEW, they were able to sell 16,000-plus in the Greensboro Coliseum, a building that generally has not done well for them. Or, Or WWE, you know, it's a hard building to fill at this point. Let's all enjoy this tonight. When we come back, we've still got to talk about a couple little things here on Wrestling Observer Live. But let's enjoy this tonight. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final few minutes of the show. I didn't touch on this, and I'm going to talk about a couple sting moments, but the Tony Khan media call backed up exactly what I had reported a year ago. Uh, Tony said that he sees them running about 9 to 10 pay-per-views per year in addition to the three Ring of Honors running. So what does that bring you up to? 12. MG, you could do the math. He also expects a huge increase in media rights deals in 2025, uh, moving them from startup status to established. The meat match was pulled because of injuries to Miro and Keith Lee. He teased something exciting for the fans at the show in Atlanta, March 6th. The new set's coming. Tunnels are back, baby. I saw it. Looks great. Concept Sting is always welcome to AEW and hopes to be involved with the company after this. Talking about Sting, we got about a minute here. Top moments in Sting's career. I want the chat room to just rapid fire them right now. MG, what was yours? Uh, well, when he first came in, he was the um, he was in Mid South, and I remember him with the Hot Stuff International, and he, and he was, was a heel, heel. And yeah, and that was his only heel run. And then he was suddenly he was became awesome in WCW. Of course. Uh, this, the rappelling out of the helicopter in Club Lavella is something that, that was that I, was I've something never seen too. live, and I was like, "Is he gonna die?" <laughs> I gotta tell <laughs> you, great. my first memory of Sting, real memory of Sting, was him and Flair, probably eighty nine ish. His feud okay. with Rick Rude, yeah. his feud yeah. with Vader. Uh, hit my introduction my to Smuda. McFoley. My introduction to McFoley is through Sting, Cactus him Jack, and Cactus yep. Jack on WCW. A lot of great memories. You know, uh, it's an end of an era. Uh, a lot of us are of the age that we remember Sting as a kid, and I think it's great that we get to experience this in a few short hours to see his final match live on pay-per-view in, sort of in front of a nearly sold-out crowd. We'll see you all next time. Wrestling Observer Live! Take care.